Hey, it's Anna. Welcome back to Solar Trip Podcast. I'm so excited to be filming today. I've already filmed a Q&A today, so I'm a little bit more in the swing of things, you know. We've got in that, like, fuck up stage <laughs> already. <laughs> but Mercury is finally out of retrograde too. I was going to say, so hopefully I can communicate better, but then I stumbled on that word. So apparently not. Maybe it's just a me thing and not Mercury. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah. Anyway, I literally made like four pages of notes yesterday for this video, so I'm really excited to film it. And I did have to blow up the size so I can see it far away because I can't see very far away, which means that it's now become nine pages. So if you see me looking over there, I'm just taking in the notes, you know, I want to make sure that I say everything that I wanted to say. And also I did do some Google research on a specific thing, so I'm probably going to read that from my notes too. But yeah, so we are going to be kind of diving deep today on the universe and what this is and what the fuck we're doing here and all of this kind of stuff. And also a lot of the lies that have been fed to us. Because as we already know, the list is infinite. But I also don't want this to be a fear mongering thing. Like when you uncover the craziness, like the level of deception that there is it can make you feel even more fear and really you're just uncovering the lies that you've agreed to because we've agreed to come here like you're uncovering the lies so that you can empower yourself not so that you get angry at them and like stuck focused on them if that makes sense you know so yeah <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there so that we're not all like getting stuck in fear which is definitely the first stage of awakening to the truth because you do tend to get a little bit angry at the horrific things that these wonderful people like to do you know <laughs> so anyway so we're going to get into talking about how the planets actually influence us and how like like what frequency even is what vibration is what this universe is actually made up of, like how it literally is made up of these things, how it actually is. Because for a long time, especially for me, I can only really talk about my own experiences, but for me, I found all of these words kind of like, like they had no substance to them. Like there was no deep understanding of what that meant. You know, frequency to me sounded like, there was no proof like it was a concept that somebody had said and that we all believed in and I started to believe in it too and like I really believed that it was frequency but I didn't really know what frequency meant which is kind of weird considering I make music and music is a frequency but I didn't like correlate the two I didn't realize that they literally were talking about the same frequency that is music like it's the same thing you know they're made up of the same elements it's literally science and I didn't really care for science. <laughs> in school, I did not care for science at all. I didn't really pay much attention. So it kind of makes sense now why I didn't realise that it was actually just science that they were talking about, you know? So when you hear the word frequency, it's like, what does that actually mean? What is frequency? And we always talk about raise your vibration. But what is a vibration? Like, in what context do they mean raise your vibration, you know? I feel like I need to readjust the hair. Let's get comfortable a second. <laughs> Let's just... If frequency is what this world is, then what is this world? If you don't know what frequency is, then how can you ever grasp what this world is or what this universe is even? Or even what you are. The fact that we're talking about how we need to raise our frequency or that we even have a frequency. Like, how can you grasp what you are if you don't understand what a frequency is or what mind is what consciousness is you know so like I feel like a lot of this journey is spent trying to understand these terms and these words because obviously words are like they have deeper meanings they've been, like when you trace back the etymology of a word you trace back to the ancient cultures that their words actually came from as well you know that these words have real meanings behind them than what we're even told as well so when we're looking at like what frequency is and how we raise our vibration I feel like they're kind of the main things that you need to understand in order to understand who you are and what your journey is and like why you would even come here and also what this world is what this physical plane is you know 
I feel like these questions kind of answer everything, pretty much. They, they at least lay the foundation. So I feel like music and light are the easiest ways to grasp this because they're something that we literally can see and we can hear and we know exists, like we completely know about them, you know? But both of these are made up of radiation. They're both made up of electromagnetic waves, which is what creates frequency. So a frequency is the rate per second of vibration. That's what a frequency is. So it's these waves, these electromagnetic waves that vibrate. So like music is the sound waves, but the speed at which they vibrate determines the frequency that you hear. So like literally the pitch that you hear. So when like, when they vibrate slow, you hear a lower pitch. When they vibrate fast, you hear a higher pitch. And that's literally how music is formed. And we can hear that. So we know that those things vibrate. And then we also know that electromagnetic waves vibrate and form light as well. So that's how you literally see light. Like, I don't know if you've stared at a candle before, but I love doing candle magic. And any time I look at the flame of a candle, you can see the beams of light coming off of them. And the way that we can literally see that through the human eye is the fact that they're vibrating. But they're vibrating on a frequency that we can see them in this physical reality, you know? And obviously... Um, certain lights like we struggle to look at you know like people say that you shouldn't look at the sun when really you should because that's the main form of light that gives life on this earth and when you stare at it when you look at it called sun gazing it allows downloads and like dna upgrades it literally shapes your dna and changes your dna so there may be certain light frequencies that we can't look at because it's just too much and I mean, if you think about the fact that the astral realm and the spiritual realm are all here in the same space, there's things that you can't see with the human eye, but it's because of your level of perception. So like, I remember when I was a child, well, I don't remember when I was actually a child, but my nan told me about when I was a child and she was holding me. And I think I was like one years old or something and she was holding me and I said to her like, nan, who's that lady in the kitchen? And she couldn't see anyone. But I could see someone and her mum had just passed away. So she was like, oh, don't worry, it's just my mum. Like, she just kind of, like, soothed the feeling, you know. Like, she didn't react. She didn't react in fear. She just, like, was like, oh, it's just my mum, don't worry, kind of thing. But it probably did freak her out a little bit, maybe. I don't know. But the fact that as a child I could see that person, I could see a lady standing there, but she couldn't. And, and like, it's because as we grow up as we become adults we have all of this programming and all of this conditioning so then we can't see certain frequencies in the physical realm you know so this person this person this being this spirit that I could see wasn't on the physical plane you know they were in the astral realm they were in the spirit realm but I could see them as a child because I'm still if I was one I'm pretty sure I was one so I'd not long come from that realm so for me to be able to see it is because my frequency is still high at that point in time. But then as you grow up and things and you have all of this conditioning put on you, your frequency drops because they instill more and more fear into you, you know. Even yourself though, because like, I'm sure Brother Panic was the person that said like when you hit yourself and then you know not to do that again and that instantly instills like, it like cages in your mind and instills certain fears of like, let me not do that because I know that that will hurt. And you learn from it and you get more and more um, conditioned and like used to the human experience. And then obviously with all of the beliefs and the societal norms that are in this world right now and when you're when you were a child, you then, you like take on all of these concepts and you forget that you literally are spirit experiencing life through a vessel like you forget this this fact so then your frequency drops and then you can't see certain things because they're vibrating vi literally vibrating at a higher frequency so that's exactly what it is about is raising that frequency not just so that you can see physical things that vibrate at a higher rate but that so you can tap into higher levels of thought so that you can get out of the fear, so that you can literally live your purpose of expansion, and then when you leave here, you won't want to come back and experience this shit again, you know? <laughs> so Earth has a natural frequency that it vibrates on, because everything vibrates, 
and I swear so many people say this but I still didn't understand what it meant but literally everything is moving nothing is still so all of the things that make up certain things so like the elements and the um, things that create the human body can you tell I don't know science I'm like what fucking word is it <laughs> the elements, the molecules, whatever you want to call it, the things that construct the human body, they vibrate. And so that's how it's formed. Like when you think about cells, they are constantly moving and they multiply and they divide and like separate and they get bigger, you know, like that's how they grow and how they expand is through dividing and multiplying. So like, you know that cells move and things in your body is constantly moving. I mean, we are the majority water and that obviously moves, but then like the the constructs of your skin and everything like that, it all moves. So like, even the table in front of me, the things that make up the table move, you know, like literally everything is moving and nothing is still, even it, like as above, so below. So like below you've got objects that are in the physical reality and you've got the human vessel. And then as above, you've also got like the planets and the solar system and the universe. All of that is moving because they're all made up of elements to do with exactly what the human body is made up of. So I literally wrote this down because I knew I would not be able to remember it but it's from the national geographic website and it says stars are like nuclear reactors they take a fuel and convert it into something else so hydrogen is formed into helium and helium is built into carbon nitrogen oxygen iron and sulfur which is everything that the human body is made up of so like all of these elements is exactly what we are made up of and it's, it's exactly what the stars and the planets and the solar system is made up of you know so like it takes a minute to kind of grasp it but I feel like when you understand that and you realize that all of these elements are not solid they're not still they're moving and it, it's energy so they move you know and like that's literally what we're talking about when, when it's raise your vibration, raise your frequency, is basically the speed at which these electromagnetic waves vibrate at. And the way that we can raise our frequency, because we're talking about the mind here, you know, we're talking about consciousness, not necessarily your body. So you can raise your body's natural frequency through diet, through exercise and these kind of things, but your mind is more powerful than that. So like to raise your mental frequency to raise your entire being's frequency including your body is through thought because it's through emotion your frequency is determined by your emotional state so whatever emotion you're feeling is those waves vibrating at a certain frequency so when you're feeling fear you're vibrating at a low frequency and when you're feeling love you're vibrating at a much higher frequency so it's going much faster and I feel like you can even feel that because it's energy. You know when you're like excited and stuff, you feel that like fast, intense frequency. You can feel it running through you. It's energy. And when you're in fear, you have no energy. Like when you're depressed, you literally have no energy. You don't want to get out of bed. And it's because it's vibrating at such a low frequency, it's not moving very fast. So you're literally reflecting that and you're not moving. <laughs> you're, you might be staying in bed. I know that I kind of laugh, but it's obviously not funny because I have definitely been in that state of like depressed emotion. But it is just a state of being. Like it's just an emotion that you're feeling that you can change and you can move. And it really is energy. So it's about the frequency that you're vibrating at and the way to change your emotional state because that's what frequency is, it's your emotions. So the way to change that is through your thoughts because your thoughts affect your emotions, they affect how you feel and how you feel determines the energy that you emit, the energy that you give out, you know, and then the level of intensity of that emotion, the, the frequency of that emotion is what your frequency is, you know. So we literally know that like you can change your own frequency in your own vessel and in your own mind to be able to see things from a higher perspective because at the end of the day like what happens when you raise your vibration meaning you raise your emotional state what happens when you're feeling from love instead of fear you literally see things from a different perspective like that's the change you know you feel better but then it also means that you see the external the the physical world 
in a different, higher perspective. You see it from a love-based perspective instead of fear. So like you're raising the vibration, you're raising your frequency to be able to see things clearly, to be able to see the truth, to be able to feel better and tap into higher levels of thought because that's really what consciousness is. It's just thought. It's just your mind. It's thought, literally. And then we obviously get into like negative, bad habits of thought and that's how our frequency drops. And that's literally how the frequency of this whole planet has dropped over years and years and years because we've instilled more and more fear. You know, the Freemasons with their shitty agenda have instilled more and more fear and so the whole collective on this plane of existence that we call Earth has dropped to a fear-based mentality because it's all mindset which is your frequency, it's your, your level of perception, and it stems from thought. So yes, we're basically, I just wanted to like make a video explaining what frequency even is, and how you can then take that knowledge and understanding and actually experience it of raising your vibration. But I feel like once you understand what it is, it then becomes easier to do. And also I feel like when you actually grasp it, it's a lot simpler than you think and a lot simpler than it's made to be you know but also all of the ancients on this earth so like ancient Egypt and other cultures like that they knew this information like they literally knew all of this information and the way that they left these breadcrumbs for us to be able to understand it like they leave it in symbols and things but only people that actually know it or that are at the level of perception enough the the higher frequency enough to see it will be able to see it so if you're in fear and stuff you're not going to be able to understand it you're going to take their metaphors literally which is exactly what the freemasons have done they've pushed that agenda so that we then take these symbols as literal so things like ancient gods and deities and all of those kind of things when we talk about christianity like people have taken the symbology literally so now they fear a god as if it's a literal being as if it's a man in the sky as if it's separate from themselves you know like it's literally taking it i'm saying literally so many times <laughs> but it's taking it literal and physical rather than metaphysical and that's what's kind of happened and that's why our frequency has dropped and we've forgotten all of this knowledge that we actually left for ourselves because when you think about it um ancestors are you you know because we reincarnate so it's not somebody else it's literally you and especially the fact that we are a part of the same collective consciousness it literally is you because everyone is you we are a reflection of each we are a reflection of each other and we're all a part of the same source the same collective the same everything so like all of this information you already know and that's why when you start learning certain things it triggers it and you're like oh like this make, makes sense and it resonates with you because it's things that you already know it's already a part of you you know i just realized i didn't press record on my software to record the microphone so we're just gonna have to go without the microphone today and just use the shitty camera microphone god damn it I did this twice already. I've already stopped this video and started again because I forgot to press record on it. And I've done it again. And never mind. So yeah, I kind of want to talk about the, um, the way that all of these things correspond. So like when you think about the planets and what they're made up of, like the literal elements that they're made up of and the universe and what that's made up of and then our bodies and what that's made up of and the fact that everything is in motion everything is electromagnetic waves including our minds and our thoughts and our emotions like everything is just so connected and then when you think about things that are in occult teachings that have been there from like ancient texts of Egypt and things like this everything has been manipulated and twisted for an agenda to keep us completely in fear and completely like closed off and completely lost basically lost is essentially what it's left us being but when you think about things like the planets and then astrology they're literally representing parts of your mind like it's not physical it's not literal it's metaphysical you know so it's metaphorical 
Okay, so I just had to pause the video there. I was editing it and I realized that I missed out a huge chunk that I was trying to explain. So I wanted to quickly record on my phone and just add this clip in there. But what I was trying to say about the planets and the solar system and also the gods is how each one represents a different archetype. So like you get a certain god and then it also has a planet and a um, star sign and a number like in numerology and a day of the week that all correspond and all represent the same archetype, the same like personality type. And this is just different ways of understanding that one archetype. And then each planet and each god, they all represent certain things. And then you can use whichever one kind of feels best for you to understand yourself. You know, like this is literally how you elevate your own mind and elevate your flaws and understand your flaws. So it's all just tools that like ancient Egypt and people like that all created or used in order to elevate themselves. And like it helps you along your ascension, a bit like using crystals and things like that. Astrology is a tool and working with different gods and goddesses. It's all a tool to help you access certain parts of your mind that have been blocked off by your ego, like your conscious mind that where your thoughts just race all the time and it's in the way. So it's just a tool to use to understand yourself so that you can elevate out of your flaws and out of these triggers and things like that. So for example, if you take the sign of Aries, Aries is all about, I mean, it literally represents the God of war and it's all about your action and your drive and like how you go about doing the things that you want to do, literally your passion and force within the world. But that also represents Mars and another day of the week and a numerology sign. And it also corresponds with a chakra, like and a color and everything like that. So all of these relate to each other. So then you can use a specific crystal that you want for that specific part of your personality to do with your drive and your passion. You can work with a specific God that also represents that archetype, a specific color. So you can have a specific color candle all of these things just coincide with the same archetype and then you can work your way through all of them to elevate certain parts of yourself and your emotional body all of these things correlate but what are they actually talking about they're talking about your mind they're talking about a certain archetype a certain personality and then that archetype they've given a god name you know, so like how you get all of these ancient gods, they've then given that a name with that same archetype, it's exactly the same thing, and they've formed it into a god, so that the people that would know this information, or the people that are on the level of perception enough to understand it, wouldn't see this god as a physical person that's separate from you, they see this as, oh, they're talking about this type of personality this type of aspect of my own mind you know so it's like externalizing a part of yourself so that you can understand it but it's not meant to be kept external and then made to think like it's completely separate from you which is exactly what they've done just to instill the fear and when you think about it like if the mind wasn't more powerful than the body then they wouldn't need to they wouldn't need to instill mind control and you wouldn't need to reprogram your mind in order to change your physical life like that wouldn't be a thing if the mind wasn't more powerful you know so the fact that you actually have to watch your thoughts and your f thoughts literally affect how you feel they affect your mood if the mind wasn't more powerful then that wouldn't happen so i feel like that's another confirmation that your thoughts literally determine your emotional state and then they determine your physical reality as well. So all of these teachings have actually been left for us by our ancestors, which you could say is by ourselves. We left all of this information for ourselves because we knew that we were falling, like we knew that we were forgetting all of this stuff, you know. There was certain groups of people which, let's be real, was fucking white men, <laughs> like it literally was, but they came into existence and started destroying all of this information like they were destroying the books they were invading all of these countries and all of these spaces and taking over everything and completely like twisting their own agenda and creating their own religions based on this knowledge that was already there that was already truth you know like ancient Egypt discovered and created astro astrology and astronomy and all of these things metaphysics they were the people that 
founded it, like they knew it, they constantly were studying death and studying the afterlife and trying to figure out why we were here and what happens afterwards and all of this, like that's literally what their time was spent doing because we didn't have Korea and all of this other bullshit. That's what they did and they had mystery schools. I'm literally reading a book right now called Stolen Legacy where it explains all of this and how the white man came in, invaded these countries and turned everything into their own agenda and hid this information to be able to hold power over everybody else. Because if they feed you information that they want you to know, which is what they still do now, to be honest, but when they feed you information that they want you to know, they can control what you do and how you think and how you feel. So, like, this information has been there for so, so long, and we can see it in these ancient texts, but it's about being able to see the symbolism for the metaphors that it is and not taking it literally, you know? So really, you could say that it's a level of perception, but like they literally had mystery schools where they would teach this knowledge. But even things like um, like Jesus Christ on the cross, and it's Dr. Phil Valentine that talks about how um, planet, we're literally in a planet, but it's actually plain, and then they've added a cross on the end, the T, you know, they've added a cross to like enclose the plane kind of thing because it makes you think that you're on a planet rather than a plane but anyway even um even the story of Christ and how he died and was born again on the cross um that's literally a metaphor and not a literal thing about somebody dying and then coming back to life as if they're this supernatural um being that's like more powerful than everybody else like it was actually a metaphor for your level of consciousness for his like humanity his human aspect of his mind dying meaning transforming into a spiritual awakening and that's what the re rebirth symbolizes like it's a symbol and not literal and all of these symbols that you can find all throughout Egypt and their ancient teachings and in so many books that talk about it and that explain it, they're literally talking about the journey of awakening. That's what Kundalini represents, you know, it's the symbol of the two snakes spiralling upwards and it's talking about your energy, literally your energy in your spine. So this comes back to complete energy and the fact that we are energy. Like, it's a symbol for the energy that spirals up your spine and into the penile gland, which is how you activate higher levels of consciousness, you know? And that's also connected to the chakras because it's about your emotional state and how you raise that frequency is through your emotional state and through your thoughts. So it's like these symbols, talking about it, if you looked at that symbol, you may just perceive it as just two snakes. Like, it doesn't mean anything. It's just it's just a snake. But actually, it's talking about the kundalini energy that's within you, you know? And, like, that's a powerful, powerful symbol, but you wouldn't know the meaning unless you actually could understand it. It's the same as, like, the... Is it a stag beetle? What's the beetle that's, like, a famous symbol in Egypt? But, like, if you looked at that symbol, you would just see a beetle, but it actually is a symbol for the penile gland because it's the same shape as the gland, which is literally your third eye, that's what it's called. So it's like, I don't know if I'm saying that right, is it penal, penal? <laughs> I don't like that word. <laughs> but yeah, so like all of these symbols just represent different parts of your mind and your journey of awakening, which is why you are here, you know? So how to raise your vibration is just through your emotional state, which is triggered by your thoughts. But obviously we're in a human experience so you're going to feel lower ones so it's not telling you not to feel the lower emotions it's just saying that like like if you're coming from love then when you feel anger and pain you're going to feel it in a higher perspective you're going to look at it from a higher perspective than if you're depressed and you're sad and you're angry and you're frustrated if you're coming at it from that angle and then something negative happens to you the way that you react to that is going to be from a real low emotional state of being isn't it so it's not saying that you won't feel the lower ones it's just that you'll look at it from a higher perspective so then you won't get stuck there you know it's so so powerful when you understand it because it's like oh now i can take control like you can take control of your own mind and your own ascension you can let go of all the lies that you've been told all of the bullshit that we've believed you know and you can reprogram it for yourself because at the end of the day, like, that is what this is. We're having to do so much 
deprogramming from all of the crap that we've been told but then you get to choose what you do want to focus on what you do want to believe and what will benefit you you know so that you can reprogram it into your complete abundance and all of the ways and all of the blessings all of the ways that you can like experience heaven on earth but like I always say you wouldn't need to reprogram it if the mind wasn't more powerful than this physical reality you know like they wouldn't go to all of this trouble if your mind wasn't powerful if your mind didn't matter or if consciousness didn't exist then they wouldn't need to hide this information because the freemasons know this information they know all of this stuff they know about frequency they know about vibration they know about the fact that you are consciousness they know how powerful your mind is they that's why they hid this information from you so that you don't know your power you know like they don't want us to know it they don't want us to realize and remember all of this information but it has been left for us it has been left everywhere in all of these texts and all of these ancient teachings and mystery schools like they left this information behind for us so really it is just a journey of reprogramming your mind so that you can get to that higher level of thought and that higher level of vibration it's basically what this is. It's like shedding all of the crap that we've had forced on us that is complete lies or that has been manipulated and twisted into lies and then seeing the truth and seeing your actual power and what you actually are and what this world is and the fact that we are all connected because we all run on electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic frequency. That is exactly what this world is made up of. And it's not some weird wishy-washy thing. Like it's literally science. It's proven you know so when you understand that and then you take control of your mind and you reprogram it because it really is about reprogramming the subconscious and not necessarily the conscious mind because the subconscious is in the spiritual plane not the physical so that's how like you can be doing certain things like certain behaviors that you're not even consciously aware of because your subconscious already it's coming from there so like driving for instance you don't necessarily need to think about how to drive you just know, like you just do it. Once you've learned, you just, it's like a natural habit, a natural reaction of just how to do it. You know, you don't have to consciously think about it. And it's because it's drilled so much into your subconscious that it's second nature. You just know how to do it. Just like breathing, really. It's literally second nature and you know how to do it. So you don't have to think about it. So there's a lot of behaviours that have been instilled through trauma and experience and brainwashing that we need to like, unravel and completely change so then we don't behave in that way that our subconscious mind has been programmed to act out you know so that's how like mind control really is like a deeply embedded thing and we're having to shift a lot of that to be honest and it's quite a bit of a process but like that is the purpose of this journey because we did incarnate into a place where the brainwashing exists like we knew this was going to happen so you literally chose to come here and forget because we always fall here and we can't remember anything like you don't remember where you've just come from you know not unless you tap into that level of thought which is from the spiritual plane like you need to be able to tap into that by vibrating at a high frequency so I hope this video like explained a bit about what frequency is but I'm just kind of going from my perception as with everything as with every video that I talk about so yeah I feel like I'll go deeper into this topic the more that I like really internalize it and then you experience it like you internalize this knowledge but then you go out and experience it so now I'm doing the shadow work and doing the work of like tuning into my vibration and, and like waking up in the morning and asking myself how do I want to feel this morning how do I want to feel today because that's how you set your vibration and you decide what frequency you want to be on you know so it really is powerful work and it takes a lot of effort but I think the basic understanding is what you need first of how to like to even know what the hell this shit is <laughs> to be able to work along this path and yeah raise our thought levels so yeah we're kind of doing this together and we will get there it's a bit of a journey but it's kind of fun when you think about it you know like you make the most of it the more that you let go of the fear the more freedom and joy and stuff that you get to feel so but thank you so much for watching and listening sorry about this crappy audio because i did forget to press record on my microphone again which is annoying but 
we'll be back to the mic next week so yeah thank you so much for listening and watching and all of my links to everything will be down below my music social media and i will see you in the next episode bye Pull it down. Oh, yeah.